episode story number 16, Niffle and the Moonstone. Back on the Earth plane, some hours after Luna had woken up, she contacts the sales group to explain the situation. Hello, passing side. Can I help you? Hello, dear. I'm sorry to contact you like this, but I need your help with some healing from your sense group for a friend in the spirit world. There is quietness and some mumbling. Then the other owner replies. Hello, can I ask who this is? Hello, dear one. Hello. My name is Luna. I have a friend who needs your help. Our help. He is in the spirit world, and your sense group might be able to provide the healing he needs. Could I possibly come over to join your group for an hour? Sorry, I'm not sure that is something we can help you with. I understand that I sound like a strange old lady, but my friends in the spirit world have seen and visited your circle, and now I request your help and presence. Please help us. Oh, hi. Um, yeah. Can I ask who you are and how you found us, please? Hello, Dawn. My name is Luna May. We have not yet met, but I have heard many stories of your gatherings. My two friends in the spirit world really need your help. They have been in your circles. Although unseen, they have guided me to you. Will you hold space for us? so we can help heal one of our dearest friends. Okay, how about tomorrow at seven? How does that sound? That's perfect, dear. I will be with you then. After the phone call ends, the owner shares the strange request they have just received with their sounds group, all of them wondering about the mystery of the situation. At the same time, Luna is packing her bag for tomorrow. The next day, Luna arrives by taxi at the retreat, anxious yet excited to meet the sounds group. She slowly gets out of the car, then walks over up to the door, knocking on it with her walking stick staff. Moments pass by, till finally the door opens. To the surprise of the owners, Dawn and Steve, in front of them an elderly woman, all dressed in white with a crooked pointy hat, amulets hanging around her neck, standing patiently at the door. Hello, dear. Oh, hello. I am Luna. I requested your help yesterday. May I come in? It's awfully cold out here. The owners exchange a confused look, thinking a white witch asking for the help. This is crazy. Hi. Hello. Good to meet you, sweetheart. The owners say, reaching out their hands to shake hers. Luna holding Steve's hand with both of her hands, looking directly into his eyes. Her warm hands and kind eyes are the confirmation Steve needed to feel safe with her. Thank you, dear, for giving us a chance. It means the whole world to us. She was then invited to meet the group, which sometime after, to make their way over to the sound space. Stepping into a room, feeling almost like a modern cave with a mystical, heavy and peaceful atmosphere. A very private room, purposely built for working with spirit. Secure, soundproof, with no windows and completely blacked out. They close and lock all the doors and turn the lights off leaving a single red lamp on in the darkness, surrounded by a circle of chairs. The sounds group begins their opening prayer while playing some lovely gentle music. Almighty loving spirit and creature of all things, our dear guides, welcome you to our, our um, unusual um, Thursday evening sitting. Um, while we're sitting in the circle this evening, we ask for divine love and protection love and truth from spirit. We ask that you keep all negative, unwanted influences totally away from us, please, while we sit. Thank you. Amen. Amen. The room starts to fill with a heavy and thick atmosphere. The small red lamp lights up their faces and they all hold hands and sing. After some time, when the energy feels right, Luna explains the situation, preparing for the group healing energy. Mid, mid, mid. Suddenly, Mird and Niffle appear in the centre of the circle, Mird waving his hand. Oh, look, look, there they are. Hello, friends. Luna says, looking down at the floor while the rest of the circle raise their eyebrows, not seeing the two non-physical beings. Everyone, this is Niffle and Mird, but oh dear, Niffle doesn't look too good, does he, Mird? Although the rest of the group can't see them, they continue with the circle regardless. Hello, everyone. Hello, Luna. Work your magic, guys. Yes, dear. 
Niffle is the one in pain. Now let's all send our healing energies to help him. The group looked down at the empty floor, not really fully understanding who or what is there, and thinking this old witch is crazy. But their physical medium starts to go deep into trance, and after a short while produces a large mass of white ectoplasm which floods the room like a mist. Niffle, remember the dreams, brother. Remember who you are. Luna reaches into her pocket to pull out the moonstone, while explaining to the group. When I let go of this moonstone, allow all of your combined group energy to focus in the center of the circle. Okay? Ready. Luna says, looking around at everyone. She lets go of the moonstone, and it gently rolls onto the floor and lands in front of Niffle. It starts to glow with a purifying light. Then Niffle suddenly vomits the moonstone that he ate energetically. <coughs> which unites with the physical moonstone. The moonstone glows very bright, everyone wowing at the phenomena. Wow! wow. So, so beautiful, beautiful the, light. the light. This amulet will help heal you, Niffle. You just need to let it help you, boy. Mir reaches into his pocket for the astral dust and throws it over Niffle, which begins to shimmer around him. In turn, Mir dances around the circle, sprinkling more astral dust onto the ectoplasm. Luna walks over slowly to pick up the moonstone and touches it to Niffle's forehead. A brilliant light engulfs him. The darkness within him starts to expand and leave Niffle's body whilst infusing with the ectoplasm. Oh my goodness. Luna steps back as the moonstone stays there. Now everyone, concentrate the energy even more. As the circle can now see the moonstone levitating in the air, nine inches off the floor, glowing, they all shut their eyes, humming and concentrating their energies. Oh. Um. As a result, the ectoplasm merges with the moonstone amulet. Next, Mird ignites the mass with his magical cane. The energy expands and pulls together the ectoplasm mass into a form of a giant dragon. Its mouth opens, and with one large flap of its huge wings, it disperses all the energy within Niffle. The group energy and the ectoplasm mist. Wow! Wow, a dragon! Now, the dragon plasm expands with the final flap of its giant wings, a short blast of ethereal light can be seen in the room, expanding outwards and focusing into the centre. The ectoplasm dissolves, leaving a heavy mist that surrounds the sitters, and moves and destroys the implant within Niffle, transforming all negative energy into positive energy. The dragon plasm mist slowly fading away, leaving behind the outline of two little beings clearly visible in the centre of the circle. Wow! Oh, I see them! That was incredible! Niffle looks up to Luna. Thank you, everyone. I feel so much better. Are you back, brother? Are you still hungry? No, not hungry anymore. Thank you, Luna. I'm mad. And with that, Niffle reaches his hand up to thank Luna, while she slowly bends down to kiss him on the forehead taking back her moonstone, which has now dropped to the floor. In return, he kisses her on the cheek. The rest of the circle see the outline of a faint niffle next to Luna's face, which slowly vanishes like a mist, leaving the outline of Mird waving his hand, slowly disappearing. Oh, look at him. The remaining ectoplasm mist gets sucked into the centre of the circle, leaving behind a serene glowing figure, the guard in the dream worlds. The dragon plasm is now gone. Niffle, you are now healed. Your true purpose is restored. Niffle, now free from the dark energy, looks around with clear eyes. He sees Luna, Mird, and the sounds group looking so happy and with hope and relief. Thank you, all of you. You are back where you belong, Niffle. The dream worlds needs you. The guardian of the dream worlds, heard and seen by all the sitters, addresses to the group. The darkness is always a threat, but together we can protect the dreams of all beings. Let this be a reminder of the power of unity, light, and the importance of home circles. With greater light, bigger shadows emerge. Keep shining bright in the darkest of spaces. And so with that, the guardian of the dream worlds vanishes, leaving everyone speechless. With Niffle healed and the threat of the darkness averted, the dream worlds are now safe once again. What new challenges and adventures await? As Niffle, Mird, and their new friends continue their journey of guardianship and discovery, the answers lies in the dreams yet to come.